everybody, and welcome to another helping of Second Breakfast, the part of the podcast for players craving another helping of cards. I'm your host, Micah Quant, and today we're going to be diving into the roots of the mountain. Today we are playing, um, what's it called? Cavern Dungeons Deep and Caverns Dim. That's the one. Um, we're going to be playing on Second Breakfast here. Um, yeah, for those of you who are new here, welcome. And, uh, just a little bit about, about Card Talk and Second Breakfast. Um, <clears throat> part of the Card Talk podcast here. And, uh, the way you can, you can consume content, um, or take, partake in our content um <clears throat> is uh we've got the main podcast here on the YouTube channel or on your favorite podcatcher uh we've got Dave and Grant and Ted over there they post a weekly uh weekly card review they uh they review and rate uh one card every week so you can check that out the, the main part of the podcast we got Matt over on the blog he does he does stuff there. You can get that at Card Talk 2018 for the written reviews, um, and we do some random playthroughs and stuff. Matt does a lot of playthroughs and and vlogs and and vlogs about him and and stuff like that. So you can check that out. Um, and Second Breakfast is is uh, is my part my portion of the podcast. And here we do random challenges, and uh, we invite you to participate in these challenges. Um, <clears throat> every two weeks, it's, lately it's been more like every month, but um, I'm hoping to, to get a little more regular. But um, for now, it, it's, it's usually every two weeks. It's, it's almost always Sunday um, that I get the video up, but... Um, if not, usually Monday it comes out, uh, but, uh, yeah, so just every two weeks we, we do a random challenge, so how this works is basically I pick a random quest, and so this week is gonna be The Hobbit here, Dungeons Deep and Caverns Dim, um, not necessarily the most beloved quest in the community, in the, in the game, but, um, but uh but we're gonna we're gonna play against it because that's that's the random one that came up and so basically then what we do is i pick two random deck attributes um for two different decks <clears throat> and just gotta try and build around them those attributes for the quest as much as you can and take that take that desk uh against that quest and basically that's just so um, to get you thinking about deck building and and cards in a new way, and maybe maybe you come up with some some combos and some some cards that you wouldn't normally use, you you find yourself using and and discover some interesting things. I know through throughout the history of our of this second breakfast channel, um, I know I've done I've found a lot of a lot of things that have been uh, just like new cards for me, new new ways of playing. It's been really fun. Um, so yeah so that's how we do it here so basically this week um this week is actually really interesting because i actually pulled a new um i actually pulled a random a, a new attribute for my deck this week at random that i haven't ever done before um so that's very cool so i pull two attributes for my deck i play just solo we used to have uh, I used to have a, a co-host here, um, but now it's just me. So I pull a, a, a deck for myself, and then I pull a bonus deck, so you can pick and choose which one you want to use, or if you're playing two players, you can use both of them, whatever you want to do for for that week, for that challenge. Um, but yeah, I, I um, so I pull some attributes for myself and pull some attributes for the bonus deck. So for myself this week... Um, we have thematic continuity and no attachments. So very, very interesting. Um, and so thematic continuity is the, is the new one for me, by the way, I, I have built, 
um, at least one, if not two, no attachment decks on this uh, on this show here. Um, but thematic continuity is a really interesting one, and and it was really cool because I don't tend to build thematic decks. I tend to build whatever works together, which often centers around an archetype that kind of you know has some some thematic tie to it but this this particular deck i focused on thematic continuity over everything else basically um and just just i so i honestly this deck might tank and fail but on as a as a thematic deck it is highly um thematic and so we'll go over the well i'll take you over to the deck list here shortly and, and we'll look at that um and what my what my reasoning was there so um but before we do that i'm just gonna um give you the bonus deck attributes and they're both all the deck attributes are in the description um my link to my deck is in the description um so the bonus deck attributes this week uh are gonna be council of the wise monosphere which is honestly a really it's gonna be a tough build um so monosphere you can include neutral I, i'm not saying you you have to only stay in one sphere you have you have to all your heroes have to be the same sphere and you can include neutral cards like that's that's monosphere that's still considered monosphere at least what i would consider monosphere so monosphere and uh and council of the wise now this gonna be a tough build just because number one council of the wise is already a difficult build but not only that you're also playing the riddles the, this is the riddles scenario and that uh that council of the wise with monosphere is gonna be very very tough for riddles although um you do have only one sphere then i guess could, but your your costs in particular will probably be all over the place um, costs will have to be all over the place. Uh, your sphere will be the same. So basically you, you can pretty much guarantee a sphere pull, uh, on a riddle. Um, but your, yeah, your costs will be all over the place and your type, I guess your type should be all right. Like it, it should be fairly balanced as far as type for riddles, but um, anyway, should be a, a really interesting challenge. I would really like to see somebody do a, a Council of the Wise Monosphere. Um, I started trying, I started, I honestly, I started building a Council of the Wise no Monosphere. And then I just, I, I just, I couldn't really do it. And, and the last two times ago, I think, two times ago, maybe it was last time I built a Council of the Wise deck. No, it was two times ago. I was playing with playing with Jennifer, um, and and we, we played. Uh, I played a Council of the Wise deck, and so I'm I'm just I'm gonna give Council of the Wise a rest. So, <laughs> thematic continuity, and so what I decided to do for this one, when I originally wrote thematic continuity into the list, I was like within the deck itself. But this deck, I took inspiration from the quest, actually, for thematic continuity. Um, and so here we have basically um, all of the, we've got all of, all of the dwarves here. So the, the company of 13. Now, strictly rule speaking, I, I did go through and figure out and, it is not possible to have every one of the 13 dwarves in a single deck. Um, you can't, it, you can, it doesn't work. Uh, basically, what is it? There's only, oh man, I'm trying to think now. Basically, there's only one copy, there's, there's only one version of Owen, one version of Thorin, and one version of, Dwalin maybe? No. Maybe those are the only two, but basically you have to build, uh, 
You have to build a bottom of friendship deck so you can include all the spheres so that all of them can be in there. But you can't build a bond of friendship with both Owen and Thorin. Or, eh, I don't know. Anyway, somehow I figured it didn't work um, to build with all of the, uh, all of, all 13 dwarves. Um, and, and if, if I'm... If I'm wrong on that, please correct me. I I would uh, I'd like to see see um, a solution to that. But um, I came very close. So I've got this bond of friendship deck where I've got Dory, Dwalin, Ori, and Thorin as heroes, and then I have basically so basically I have twelve of the thirteen dwarves in these cards, and then basically Owen is the only one missing. And he's represented by the Erebor Battlemaster. I threw, threw in the Erebor Battlemaster. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be Owen. We're just gonna take a little little marker and just, just rewrite that. That's um that's Owen uh, for you. And I, it's maybe not the most thematic choice. It would, probably would have been as far as lore wise better if like it would have been good if I if there was like a healer dwarf or something. But there's not. So. Um, could have possibly done map maker or something, but I needed tactics, more tactics and stuff. So, um, apart from that, so I also then, so I have this thematic continuity and so all the dwarves are there, um, you know, and it's, it's, uh, in line with the quest because you've got basically the quest you're playing is with all the dwarves. They're fighting the orcs and goblins or they're fighting the goblins and stuff. And then you have Bilbo. He's off on his own in his own separate staging area doing the riddles. So thematic. I've got Gandalf in there um, and he's going to be uh, he's going to be really, really good to, to pull out at some point. Um so Gandalf is also in there, obviously, because he was he was with them all and, and stuff at that point. Um then we've got some eagles actually. Now the eagles are there because I did need more allies in my deck to actually make it functional. But also then like the eagles, like it's kind of between where this quest ends and and the next one begins basically where or like at the end of this quest you you have like the whole scene where they're fighting and then and then the wargs actually like chase them and then the eagles come and save them so i felt including me I, I needed some more allies and and i was out of dwarves so um so i and and so part of this was also to uh to satisfy the bond of friendship contract um, as well, and so I decided. Well, eagles are actually are actually pretty thematic with in in with this deck here. So I've got some eagles, uh, just a very few, just a few eagles on the side um, as extra allies there. Now um, we are also we've got like Lure of Moria, a very good tale. Bjorn's hospitality is in here. Just because I was looking for one more lore card, and it is very thematic in that that's where they go, like after directly after this quest, is they're going to, to Bjorn's house, and so Bjorn's hospitality is in there. Um, it is it's it's obviously not a good card, but they're also it's thematic, and um, I could use some healing. Um, Tides of Fate is in there, it's maybe thematic ish. Um, could be seen. Now, the side quests uh, are going to be, the side quests are essentially going to be breaking thematic continuity here. Um, I put them in to fulfill Bond of Friendship and just to help out a little bit. Um... And the and also so we've got just some random ones. I I have like Waters of Nimrodel because I need healing. Um, Gildor's Council uh, because it's a it's a solid lore event and and for the first 
one or two quest stages, you're going to be revealing two cards. So that'll help me actually in this quest. And it's cost free. So basically, if you look through, um, this deck was built for taking on the riddles and stuff. So uh, with that in mind, so I've got lots of allies and I've got uh, nearly all my cards are cost, or well, well over half my cards are cost free. 29 cards cost three. Um, zero cost two or four, five of one, 11 zero cost, and uh, five cards cost five. So um, I was looking for cost three events. I couldn't put any attachments in. So once I filled up my allies, I had to fill up with events. And there's not a lot of thematic events for dwarves. So um I, there so keep that in mind so some of these kind of break break our thematic continuity a little bit but um overall i had a lot of fun building this deck and i feel like it was it was pretty pretty thematic here so we're gonna see how we do so let's actually get into the game get into playing some cards here uh, which is which is what we're here for that's that's what we that's what we do here oh i've obviously uh, obviously been timed out here. Let's see if I can, might need to, oh, there we go. Ha. Okay, so we've got Bond of Friendship. My deck must be exactly 50 player cards and include 10 cards from each of the four spheres. Can't include more than two copies of any of any card by title in your deck choosing your starting heroes you may choose three four heroes instead of three each hero must belong to a different sphere and as you can see we've got that here and um we're very quickly going to be able to get the five five dwarves out to trigger like thorin and ori and stuff so that'll be good <clears throat> um yeah okay so um <laughs> I don't really know what this deck is trying to do, other than really just I want to see as many of these dwarves come out as possible. And I've only got one in this starting hand. I've also got Arid Loon Miner, again, because it was just cost three and I needed another neutral card. Like, a lot of the ones that are breaking our continuity here are just because I needed another one of those cards to fulfill this contract. And, uh, so... So that's where we're where we're having a lot of our our continuity breaks, and there just wasn't anything left thematic. So I just put in something that that would work. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually I'm gonna mulligan. Let's see. We've got well, we got two of our dwarves. This is this is Owen. Remember. <laughs> This is our Owen, um, and we got Keeley here, which is good. Um, gonna take us a little bit to to get him out there, but um, it's gonna be our our resources are gonna be pretty tough on this one. Like we're gonna be we're gonna be struggling as far as resources go, unfortunately. But we're gonna. We're going to, we're going to take this on. So add Lake Cavern, Lake in the Cavern to the staging area, create the riddle area with stage 2A and follow, uh, set up instructions on that card. So we've got, uh, Lake in the Cavern. This is in the staging area. Create a riddle area with stage 2A and follow instructions on that card. So. Let's go quest deck. We want two A. <clears throat> Search the encounter deck for Gollum and Bilbo's magic ring. Place Gollum and Bilbo Baggins into the rid riddle area and attach Bilbo's magic ring to Bilbo Baggins. Then shuffle the encounter deck. So um, we got Gollum here. So we're going to denote the riddle area is going to be to the right of the uh, stage 2A card. We've got Gollum, Bilbo's magic ring attached to Bilbo Baggins. Um, when answering a riddle, spend one Baggins resource to discard another an additional player card from the top of your deck. Exhaust Bilbo's magic ring and raise each player's threat by two. 
to add one Baggins resource to Bilbo Baggins resource pool. Um, that's my other concern with this deck. I'm concerned I'm going to threat out. I'm hoping Dwalin will will be able to to keep our threat down enough to to not threat out, but we'll see. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to flip this over. Players cannot advance to stage three A until unless both one and one and two are complete. Progress tokens cannot be added to or removed from this quest except by answering riddles. Cards in the riddle area are immune to player card effects and cannot leave the riddle area except by quest effects. Now, um, let me just pull up. Over hill and under hill. <clears throat> we'll, just, we'll just pull this up just to make sure we're not messing up the riddles. But basically, like when you draw a card when you're when you're staging, I think, when you draw a card with a riddle effect, you you resolve the riddle. Um and and basically the riddle is gonna be like oh name a card type or a card co or a cost or whatever and you're gonna flip over cards from the top of your deck and you're gonna be trying to match um match those <clears throat> so here we go uh riddle is a new game effect featured on some encounter cards so when it's revealed from the encounter deck player must choose between resolving that card normally or answering the riddle so you get the choice you can answer the riddle or resolve the card normally so you can only choose to answer riddle if it's revealed from the encounter deck. Um, and then you answer a riddle. So each riddle begins with the first player names a blank. So you have to make a guess based on the items you're instructed to name. And then you discard the top X cards of your deck. And basically you get one progress for each of those cards that match. Um... <clears throat> So, we're going to go ahead here, and we, so we create a riddle area. <clears throat> now, players cannot advance to stage 3A unless both 1B and 2B are complete. Reveal one additional card per player during the staging step. X is twice the number of players in the game, so we've got two threat here. Can't travel here. Immune to player card effects. After we advance to stage 3, remove it from the game. So we're just going to be sitting there adding two threat to our... Staging area for a while. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to start around and jump right into this. So, got a test of will. That's good. That's good. Um, so we could play, actually, ooh, ooh, that's actually maybe our best move right now. Yeah. You know what? Let's let's save up for Keeley and possibly save aside for test of will for now. But let's spend all our other resources and play this Arid Luin Miner because then that triggers our five dwarves uh thing here right away. <clears throat> He's not gonna do a ton on his own, but uh, but yeah, it triggers our, our five dwarves. So we have five dwarves out, and and we're good to go. So let's go ahead, and we're gonna commit. Let's just commit all these guys. We can leave uh, the miner open as a squishy if needed. Actually, no, 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 no. no. Let's leave. Let's leave him open. And then we'll we'll commit the the miner instead. Okay. <clears throat> so that's gonna be our questing power. We've got six willpower, two threat. So now we reveal a, our first card. We have to reveal two cards every every time. So the first player must choose to answer the riddle on this card. If he finds at least one match, discard cards from the encounter deck until another riddle card with a riddle is discarded, then answer that riddle. So basically I have to answer two riddles in a row. 
um, <clears throat> if I'm successful on this one. If I'm not successful, then I only answer this riddle and I suffer the consequences. So whenever, um, oh, there we go. After the first player answers a riddle and fails to find at least one match, Golem attacks Bilbo Baggins. Do not deal a shadow card for this attack. So, uh, and if Bilbo dies, we lose. Um, so first player names a cost, shuffles his deck and discards top two cards. So I'm very confident in that because my, most of my deck is, is three cost. So I'm going to shuffle and discard the top two cards, naming three cost naturally. So there's one. Oh, and we should actually, we need to per round give Bilbo a resource <clears throat> as well. So that's a three cost. So we answered it correctly. We get one progress for that because there was one match. Now we need to discard to another riddle. So we're going to discard no riddle, discard no riddle, riddle. The first player names a card type, sphere, and cost. Shuffles his deck, discards the top three cards. Um, and for each one that matches all three items, we get a progress. So, hmm, see, this one's going to be tricky. And so I'm gonna, just going to refer back to my deck here. I think, Ooh. yeah, that's going to be very tough. I doubt we'll get this one. I think, honestly, cost three ally might be... Because there's six of those. Cost three tactics ally, sorry. <clears throat> the spear one is going to be... It's going to be the trickiest for me here. Um... Actually, may, no, cost three, cost three leadership ally, actually. So we're going to do that. We're going to go cost three leadership ally. I've also, I've got two of the tactics ones in my hand already. So let's do cost three leadership ally and hope we get lucky here. We got one that's not a cost three leadership ally, two and three. So nothing there. So we can spend Bilbo's resource um, to to discard an additional card, but I don't think it's worth it on this riddle because it's such a tough riddle to to actually answer. So I think we're just gonna we're gonna take the hit on this one. So exhaust Bilbo to defend and he gets a damage. <clears throat> so that's already a damage on the first round, which is not a great start for sure. Um Okay, and that was our first card. Now our second card is going to be Goblin Miners. Gets plus one defense for each cave location in play. So that's, he has plus, they have plus one defense. <clears throat> so now we're going to check. We get two progress on this quest. And then we get our Goblin Miners come down to engage us. Um... If we go undefended, we could kill them this turn and get our two threat reduction as well, which might be worth it. I think let's do it. Let's let's just go let's go undefended. See what happens. Oh, he makes an additional attack. Okay. You gonna make another attack. We're gonna put those two damage on Ori, I think. Um now do we defend? No, let's let's keep going. I probably am not playing optimally here, but I want to push for that threat reduction very quickly here. Okay, and and we get rid of the enemy, <clears throat> kill him, and get our two threat reduction. Okay, um, that's going to start a new round for us now. Oh, okay. I guess we're just going to have to do this manually. <clears throat> okay, so we got a three. Oh, we got Nori again. We don't need that. 
Okay. Um. So nothing to play this turn. Uh. Yeah. So we're just gonna go run at it again, same as last time, basically. Yeah. Just gonna do same same thing, same same. Um, and we got another one of these guys. And then, oh, another one. Perfect. Lovely. That's not what we needed. Okay, so we make zero progress. <clears throat> and both of these guys are going to engage us. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Going to be very hairy very quickly. Um, maybe we should just block both of them for now. Okay, let's block, flip, oh great, okay, just exhaust this one, and then gotta go undefended, okay, so let's go two damage, <clears throat> and that's the end of our round. Um, yeah, no riddles. To answer, no progress made. We go on to the next round, and we find we've got a Gandalf here, which could be really, really good to get rid of one of these guys. Um, I'm gonna go right away and go three. Oh, Thorin should have two more resources on him actually, because he should be generating an extra one every round. I forgot, and I should have actually two more cards for Ori. <clears throat> now, I'm going to play the Storm Comes, which I, is a card. I don't know if I've ever played it, but man, that's going to be really, really helpful in our in our Bond of Friendship deck here. Um, I've got a very good tail as well, which I could trigger one, uh, at the end of the round with Gandalf. So anyway, so I'm going to play Keeley into, I'm going to put Keeley into play here, which means we search our deck for Feely and put him into play. Close and shuffle. And then we are going to, um, Yeah, we're going to go ahead and play Gandalf, because I don't have anything to use my leadership resources on currently, and I make them very fast. So I'm going to use five resources here. Play Gandalf. I'm going to eliminate one of these miners. Um, just get that taken care of. And then we're going to commit Gandalf to the quest. He's going to help us quest. And I think we're just going to go with that for now. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. And then at the end of the round, we'll play a very good tail. And do all that good, good fun stuff. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, let's make the storm comes the, uh, the active quest. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna be questing on the storm comes. Hopefully we can clear that. Okay, so we have to answer the riddle on this card. So, um, name a cost. So we're gonna name cost three. Or we could, we could, oh no, we can't test a will. We don't have spirit resources. Okay, so let's name a cost three. I, we probably don't want to cancel it because we do need the progress, so. And we have actually three resources on Bilbo because I forgot to put another one on him before. Okay, so cost three, there's one. So there's one. So we got one of cost three, so we get one progress. Discard this card. And now we discard to another riddle effect. There's a riddle. Um, type and sphere. See, this, this, uh, this sphere is going to really screw me over in this quest. Top three cards with type and sphere. Um, 
Like, I would say ally tactics, but we've already got one, two, three, four tactics allies in hand. That's maybe not great. Um... Although it might still be our, our best option. Yeah, let's... Because we have... Oh no, because there's eight, that's only, okay, so there's only three tactics allies left. No, let's not do that. Let's look at our discard pile here. Oh, there's only, oh, there's only one tactics ally left. Wow. Burn through those. Um, We don't have very many leadership cards out here. There's just the two. I guess there's Keeley as well. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know. Or Feely, sorry. Well, we've got, so we've got five, five leadership allies. Oh no, it's cost. Cost and sphere, right? No, type and sphere. Yeah. Dang it. Huh. We've got, we've got five leadership allies left. Maybe we'll do that. Let's do Leadership Ally. Okay, here we go. Three cards. Leadership Ally. One, two, three. Nothing. Okay, so now we gotta start spending billable resources. Otherwise, we're gonna kill them. Uh-oh. Come on. Oh, there we go. We got Ballin. Phew! On our last... Last card there. <clears throat> so we got Ballin, so we got one more progress, and then we're gonna go ahead and uh and that was our first reveal. That was our first card draw. Second card is a goblin axeman, so he gets plus one attack for every lo cave location in play. I should actually I guess I could put this and this on there okay so he's gonna come down and engage us and yeah so this guy's got two across the board so let's deal shadow cards um i'm gonna defend we're gonna take one defense on Dory. So I'll raise my threat by two. And then I'm going to take the other defense on my miner. And I got to deal two damage among characters I control. And so that's going to be on Gandalf. And he gets one damage for that attack. And then I can go ahead and attack all four. Oh, wait. No, I'm going to just do three to kill the miners. Because I want to trigger my very good tail. And so that's going to reduce our threat by two because Dwalin killed. And then now all my cards ready at the end of the round um oh we didn't resolve questing um so i had nine willpower and four in the staging area so yeah five progress so this goes to the victory display <clears throat> just made it by um and that's gonna give us now we can just use all our resources on the first the first ally we play every round we can 
it doesn't require a resource match, so that's good. So we're going to ready all our characters, and then we're going to exhaust Gandalf and... Oh, wait, no. Right, because they all ready. So I'm actually, I'm going to exhaust the miner. I'm going to actually kill this guy instead of the... Instead of these guys. Look. There we go. I'm going to kill this guy instead, because I could have used um, Keely on, on that guy. And then I'm going to exhaust Gandalf and my miner to play a very good tail, discard the top five cards in my deck. I'm, I'm going to run out of cards. Um, oh, nice. So Guardian of Rivendell was, again, one of those ones just to fill in a hole. Okay, so we got Biffer. Uh, we already got Feely on the table. So that's three, four... Five. Okay, so we've got these three to choose from. Um, we're obviously going to play Biffer because it's thematic. We're also going to play... Well, Maneldor doesn't actually help us. Um, maybe more thematic than, than the Guardian, but he's not actually going to do anything for us because we're not playing him. Or, yeah, because we don't have any, any locations currently, so... We're going to play Guardian because we need some defense. Um, and then we're going to chuck Gandalf. Okay, now it's a now we're just going to trigger a new round. But he's going to be exhausted still. Uh, we're going to give Bilbo a resource and draw an extra card. Now, so our first ally... Um, Our first ally isn't going to require a resource match. So, again, we, we just we want to get lots of these dwarves into play. Ooh, actually, Nori might really come in handy um, this game. Because I might run out of cards. So let's let's do Nori so we can... Oh, we can, we can play him normally, though. So we've got five resources here we can spend on somebody else. Um, let's bring our Owen out. With one, two, three. And then we're going to do three resources on Nori here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, nine of our 11 dwarves, or our 12 dwarves out now. So we're, we're only missing three. We've got one in our hand. Um, this is very exciting. Oh no, 13 dwarves, because we're counting this one. So um, we're only missing four on the table, and we have one in our hand. Um, there's probably one or two that we can't actually play right now, but anymore, but whatever. <clears throat> Okay, actually, oh, do we want to use our Lord resource? Well, yeah, better than using our spirit resource, because now we can cancel. Um, okay, two cards. First one. Type and cost. Yeah, we'll, we'll answer it. Or we have to engage a creature. So let's just do the, let's answer it. How many cards? Two, probably? Three. Okay. So we're going to do cost three ally. One, two, uh-oh. Three. There we go. We got one. So we get one progress. And then uh, next card. We get a goblin cave. That's okay. It's the active, lo when it's the active location, goblin enemies get plus one. Oh, we didn't. <laughs> Okay, we didn't even commit to the quest. Now, I would have saved an ample amount to deal with enemies, so um, I'm just going to try and kind of do what, what maybe I would have done. I would have wanted him open for attack. I guess I could have committed them because I've got lots of attack over here, and that's probably what I would have done right there. Not, uh, not trying to calculate too much here. Um... Okay, so we get two progress on the quest, and uh, while it's the active location, goblin enemies get plus one threat. Okay, that's fine. Uh, 
yeah, so we'll travel there. And then we're going to defend against these guys. And we've got no shadow. And then we're going to, we need three hits. So we're going to attack with both Wallen and Nori. So this card is going to, for, uh, I want to make sure I'm not moving the whole thing. So this card is going to go on the bottom of my deck and then i also reduce my threat by two which is good um then that's the end of the round we move to a new round and we've got lure of moria that's nice um okay so now our first ally isn't going to require a resource match so we're going to play bomber out here um, I want to save up for both Guild Wars Council and Lure of Moria, but Thorin generates more resources, so I'm going to use his. Throw Bomber out here. Unfortunately, Bomber doesn't really do a whole lot, but, um, he's there. So, <laughs> this is probably one of, one of, um, among, among the worst cards in the game. I mean, unless you're playing, unless you're playing against a quest that has a bunch of underground locations, which we do not. Technically, they're underground, but they don't, they aren't, uh, they aren't traded underground. So, uh, whatever. Um, so we're gonna quest. Um, man, we're kind of struggling for willpower, honestly. Uh. Quest. Is this immune to player card effects? It is. Okay. Bomber won't help us. Oh, we killed these guys. <laughs> okay, well. That's really all we got, so we're going with it. <clears throat> Ward's Glade. After a character takes damage from an attack made by a creature enemy, remove one progress from the current quest. Or we can name a sphere. Um, could do that. This card's the top card. Just one card, though. Only got one shot at it. Tactics is pretty much gone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Tactics is gone. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of spirit actually still. Four, five more. Well, what do we got for spear? We got one, one, two. There's one in this card, one in my hand, three. So there's seven spirit cards in here, actually. So I feel like we'll go for the riddle and we're going to name spirit. And we're going to then, oh, I didn't give Bilbo a resource, so we're going to use his first resource. There we go. Spirit. So now we answered the riddle. So we get one progress. <clears throat> and discard this card. And now we're going to go to the next one. Um, and we've got another Goblin Axeman, which will be pretty easy to deal with. We get four progress, eliminating that, and get one progress on the quest. And we bring down the Axeman. And now we can defend. There's only one... He gets plus one attack. So he's got two attack. Boom. Nothing. And then we'll kill him. Again, putting the top card on the bottom of our deck. I don't know. Yeah. I think that just moves that card to the to the bottom, but I don't want to risk putting my discard file into the bottom of my deck. 
Okay, now and lower a threat by two. And kill this guy. Okay. And then it's gonna start a new round. And yes, good. Glowing is gonna be good to give us some some willpower here. So we're going to actually we're going to pay for Gua here actually. And then we're going to search for an eagle ally and put it into play under our control. Um, so we're actually going to probably get Williador out here. And then... Um, Because we do have Flight of the... Oh, no, we don't anymore. Okay, let's... Uh, no, we've got... Because we got a Maneldor in our hand. So let's just... Let's put Willydor out there. Um, and then... We're going... So that's going to cost us five. Oh, I didn't get Bilbo or Igor's again. Um, so let's go one... Two, three, four, five, and then oh no, no, sorry, we'll put that up one. We'll bring Ori down one, and then we're gonna spend our three on Glowin, and then I'm gonna add two resources to Owen <clears throat> or Ori, not Owen. Okay, so I'm gonna actually I'm gonna put. I'm going to reorder these a bit. I'm going to put all our eagles and others over here. Because um, our dwarves, I want our dwarves to be center stage here. And as you can see, we have 11 dwarves out. 11 of our 13. So we're we're getting close. We're getting close. Our, our company is almost here. And I'm going to be, I'm just going to be happy if this game ends with all 13 dwarves out. Um... Obviously, with this guy as stand-in for Owen. Um, I probably could have and probably would have been better if I had Longbeard as a stand-in. Um, and just taken out a couple lore cards and put in put in a couple different tactics events. Because that would be a, a more appropriate stand-in as well. But I figured I was going to be struggling for attack. But I am definitely, that's the least of my worries right now. So we're going to quest with basically everybody who can quest, um, maybe except Guardian and Nori because we want his effect to trigger and Dwalin as well. We want his effect to trigger. Um, may as well quest with Dory because we do have Guardian. And let's get some progress going. Um, let's get a move on. Okay, so starting with first player, each player must choose one goblin enemy from the discard pile and add it to the staging area. Well, that's not so bad. We could cancel it, but I, I'm 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 feeling I'm feeling like I can take a goblin enemy. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna take our sword. No, no. Why would we do that? Let's take let's take this guy. Okay. Now we're going to close that up, and then our next card is, so first player names a sphere and cost. Um, shuffle the deck, discards top two cards. So sphere and cost, again, we're, oh, I should actually have one more card in my hand, because I didn't draw one for, for Ori. So I'm actually, I still have a lot of spirit in here. Um, so I'm pretty confident in spirit. Now, yeah. Oh, but spirit honestly is very split on cost here. I do have both copies of Bofur and one copy of Keeley still in there. So that's 3 out of 12. 
up to 4 out of 12. That's pretty good. Yeah, let's do that. So we're going to shuffle. And we're going to go and name Spirit 3. So we got rid of Bjorn's Hospitality and Double Back, which is Spirit, but not Three. So we're going to use Bilbo's first resource to grab a Spirit One and his next one to grab a Spirit Three. Hey, there we go. So we solved this riddle. Um, boom. We get one progress. And then we are going to make 11 progress on the quest. So we are good to move on there. So now we just need three more progress on the riddles here. So we're going to grab our goblin miners down. Again, they have plus one defense. And we are going to defend with our guardian of Rivendell. Shadow card. Good. Now we're going to attack with Dwalin and Nori, kill this guy, and minus two threat, and move Bofur back onto the bottom of our deck again. <clears throat> okay, and new round. We'll add a resource to Bilbo, draw a card. Okay, so we may as well side quest, rally the west, because we're, we've got this quest completed. Um, our only ally we can play is Meneldor, so we may as well we can play him from any spheres we want. So let's go here. Doubt we're moving on this turn, so we shouldn't need Lure of Moria this turn. And I don't necessarily need Gildor's Council. If anything, I want more cards so I can answer riddles. And then we'll get rid of that third, that last tactics resource. Put Meneldor into play. He won't give us any progress, but he'll be there. And he's two willpower, so it's kind of what we need right now. <laughs> Uh, well, not really, actually, because now we don't, we just need to negate the threat. So, oh, also, Willie Dor is back in my hand. Um, Glowin. Um, Thorin. Maneldor. Uh. Oh, right, we want a side quest. Okay, yeah, let's go a little more intense here. here minor making 10 progress good but let's just do this just in case okay so we've got spear and cost again um i think we're good to go with uh i think we're really good solid to go with three spirit again because yeah we did we only discarded one spirit last time and uh one spirit three last time and we put that one on the bottom of our deck so we're gonna go shuffle up and we're gonna go spirit three and that's two cards right yeah top two one so one we get one progress these are the two these are the two that we're still missing here Oops. And pretty soon, actually, this is going to, this is actually going to be good because pretty soon we're going to have Nori throwing cards onto the bottom of our deck, but our deck will be empty. So we'll know exactly what we need for these riddles. So actually, this is, is going to be good. 
Um, so we answered that riddle. We got one progress. And then uh, first player exhausts a character. The controls. Um, so I don't really care. Bomber is going to get exhausted. We get nine progress. Easily beat Rally the West, which is going to give um, every hero plus one willpower. <clears throat> nice. Okay. We're going to bring this guy down. Uh, block with our guardian. Uh, it doesn't get through the defense. And then we're going to attack with these two and Owen as well. And discard that one. And then we get Ballin, leadership Ballin. Uh, on the bottom of the deck. Unfortunately, it's not... Um, unfortunately, it's not Bofer. That would have been really cool, because then, again, we would have been able to easily do Spirit 3, but whatever. So he's going on the bottom of my deck. And then... Oh, yeah, because it says both for here. It doesn't say discard pile. So that should work. Okay. Um, so we going on the bottom of my deck. Reduce my threat by two. Man, I don't think I've ever played Dwalin, but this has been really good. I really like Dwalin. Um, okay. And that's, that's, I mean, quick aside here. Like, that's really what we're what we're about here on this on this show is just um finding those those cards that you just you just normally wouldn't use okay so we pulled a bofer which is both good and bad it's good because we get to add a dwarf to the party it's bad because we are actually um running out of spirit three then but that's okay whatever we're gonna go um we're gonna bofer we're going to play Bofer with one Dwalin resource, one Ori resource, and one Dory resource. Now, the reason for that is because we could get through this round. And if we do get through, I would like to have Lure of Moria ready. Ready to go. Locked and loaded. Um, so we have all but one now. We're still looking for Biffer here. Um... <laughs> That's the only one left uh, who is not in our party. And this makes me so happy. Oh, this is very exciting. Okay, I'm. we're hoping for Biffer. That's all. We're, I don't even care if we get a win anymore. At this point, I don't think we can lose. But um, bomb, I guess if Bilbo dies, that's, that's our only... I don't see that happening. I guess if we run out of cards for riddles, I guess... Yeah, if Nori can't put put something there and we run out of cards for riddles, I guess probably probably Bilbo will die, I guess. So let's not let that happen. Okay. Here we go. Two cards. First card. We got a goblin runner. Surge. Oh, let's actually commit to the quest first. Be a good idea. Quest, 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 quest. Quest. Um, quest. 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 <laughs> That's lots. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's take Guahir off because he might be helpful elsewhere. Yeah, let's go with that. Okay. And then. Okay, characters get minus one count on attack until the round, or first player names a card type and sphere. Card type and sphere. What do we have left in our deck? Would be good to know. We know we have actually. Okay, so we do know we we have a ballin. So we could name. Um. We could name ally leadership or leadership ally. Let's look through. Let's just do a quick little. Um, 
we'll count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh wait, what was I count? I was counting counting spirit, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got two spirit cards still in there, I think. Oh no, nine. There's only one spirit card left. There's one spirit card and one leadership card, I know that. Uh, which spirit card is it? It's going to be Keeley, actually, again. My other Keeley copy. Yeah. So we could push for the Keeley copy. Um, spirit ally. I mean, we're almost guaranteed to get... Well, we are, because we can raise our threat by two. We're, we're guaranteed to get it whatever we choose. Just would like to not lose both her. Okay, let's just because I don't think it's gonna be happen to be the correct one. Or I don't think they're gonna be two of the correct ones. So let's just do Keely Ally or let's go Spirit Ally. Try for Keely. Um discard the top three cards. Oh, okay, yeah. We're probably gonna throw Biffer out anyway. Oh, wait, no, 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 sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, false alarm. Biffer was still left on our, on the bottom of our deck. We got to shuffle up before we... Okay. Shuffle. Okay. Now we go. Yeah, Biffer's gone. But we got Keeley too, so... That's good. Um. So Biffer's gone. We get one progress. Bloop. <clears throat> uh, place one progress on stage two. Yeah, so we get rid of that. And now that's the end of our reveal. Oh no, that was surge into that. So now we got to reveal one more. Okay, so we can name a card type. Discard the top two cards. So for each of those types. That matches. Oh, great. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now, okay. Yes. Am I going to figure it out? Yes. But that's part of the riddles mechanic, I feel like, is figuring it out. So could I speed things up and just look at this card? Yeah. I mean, mechanically wise, it's the same thing. But... Gameplay-wise, I feel like that kind of destroys the intent of the thematic part of this quest, right? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I think that's probably why um, it's quite disliked, is because there's all this calculating and counting and... Oh, what? So I'm counting... Oh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm counting 28 allies. So I, I have an ally left. Because I've got 29 total. Um. So, yeah. <clears throat> so we've got an ally left. That's going to complete our riddle. So it's it's this figuring out... Because it's, a, it's, it's about solving riddles. So you're really... You're puzzling out... The answer to this riddle and so I believe I, like I think that's kind of the heart of this quest and so there we go we got the ally boom whoops wrong one so at the very end of our deck we end up completing this stage so completed both of these quest stages now and we're into the fire so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna flip that over now, when revealed, the first player gains control of Bilbo Baggins. Reveal one encounter card per player and add it to the staging area. 
Uh, when revealed, starting with first player, each player must search the encounter deck and encounter discard pile for one creature ending, put in play, engage with him, then shuffle the encounter deck. I'm going to just go ahead and test and will that because I can. So, nope. Um, all riddle effects are ignored. Treachery gains surge. So, actually, um, oh, Golem engages first player. Also, so this is actually going to surge. And then that's going to surge. And we got an Axeman, which is... Uh, which is actually plus no, plus, plus zero attack, because we have, um, we don't have that cavern anymore, and now all riddle effects are ignored, treachery cards gain surge, if players defeat this stage, they've won the game, so now we're just gonna grab all of these enemies, and we actually have a chance of getting Biffer now, because we've got four enemies to kill, Biffer is four cards down. Oh no, I just played Test of Will. <gasps> Maybe he's not that far down. Okay, we'll see. Um, so we're gonna go... I think we can kill him all this turn. Oh, there's only two shadow cards. So, um, so we're gonna take Golem's attack on the Guardian. Uh... Is gonna flip this over. Boom. Good. We're just gonna take the Axeman undefended. Boom. One damage on somebody. Um, throw that over here on Dwalin. And then now we can do attack back. So we're gonna attack. Oh, right. No. Duh. Nori can only attack, well, twice, I guess. So we're not gonna get Biffer back. Okay. So that's gonna kill that guy. We get two less threat put this card on the bottom of our deck we're going to attack back with we need three for each of these okay uh let's just go with what here kill this guy um we need eight for golem so let's wait on our ready for now Let's just kill this guy with, yeah, okay, now, I know we, we actually, we could have done it without the ready, I think, maybe not, because we would have had four, five, six, seven, eight, no, we couldn't have, okay, so we're gonna actually, we're gonna take the ready, Luramoria, ready everybody, I guess that goes on the bottom of her deck now too though. So Nori's attack is actually gonna put this one on the bottom of our deck. Oops. So it doesn't work anyway. Oh, that's 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 very upsetting, honestly. Oh, I'm very sad about that. Uh, we did not get Biffer onto the board. I mean, we could stall it out and probably get him on the board, but I'm not gonna do that. We're we're just gonna we're gonna go. Okay. Um. So ready, everybody. Basically, smush Gollum. Um. Just absolutely crush him. And um, with the full force of a of a dwarf pile up in Bilbo's house. <laughs> We're going to crush Gollum there. Um, and yeah, so that's going to be the end of that round. New round. See, and as you can see, like Dwalin is, if, and but he's very situational because you have to play him in a quest against orc enemies. If there's no orc enemies, he is not very good at all. But if there is orc enemies, like look, my threat is going down. Since the beginning of the game, it's been nine rounds. And we're down by six threat. It's insane. Um, so yeah, we got our two cards. And now we go ahead and we can play cards. I guess we could play a Gandalf. But whatever. We're, yeah, actually Gandalf, honest, Gandalf is, is part of the company here. Gandalf is part of the company. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta put Gandalf out there and, and, 
you know, we'll lower our threat another five. Because we can. Um, we'll put Gandalf out there. And we're going to quest with basically everything we got now. Oh. Uh, oh. And Bilbo has plus one willpower. Okay. Well, we're making 30 progress. We shuffle the... Oh. We shuffle the discard into the deck. Oh, whoops. Shuffle into deck. There we go. And reveal a card. We have to choose to answer the riddle on this card. But there's no riddle. So riddle effects are ignored. But treachery surge. So, and then that's going to surge. And ignored but doesn't surge so we get 29 progress on the final stage conquer but and we won the quest with this fork deck i man i had a lot of fun playing this deck like it does break some thematic continuities here and there but honestly just the the sheer fun of just playing another dwarf out there um, every time. Just getting closer and closer to that full 13 dwarves. Um, it's just a real, real fun thing. So, and again, this is how I did my thematic continuity deck. You can do it really however you want. You can do it thematic continuity within just the deck itself. You can make it thematic with the quest. You can you know, make it mostly thematic. I mean, mine is essentially mostly thematic. Like, it does break continuities here and there with some cards just to, number one, fulfill the contract. Number two, make the deck work a little better. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was a really fun, really fun deck to play just for the fact of just getting all your dwarves out there. Now, what I will do is I will replace this Erebor Battlemaster um pretty sure um i will most likely yeah replace this battle master with uh the map maker long beard map maker and probably just take out like scout ahead and maybe a maybe bjorn's hospitality or something like that um and then I'll put in a couple tactics things. I don't know what, but maybe a couple more. Maybe a couple more eagles. Maybe. Um, so honestly, I'll probably do that. But all in all, man, that was a lot of fun. Um, what else would I do differently? Like, I think... Uh... Okay, so the Storm Comes, actually, that's the other thing. Storm Comes is a really key element to this deck. Basically, if I do, it, basically, if I pull Gather Information, if I pull Storm Comes in a starting hand, that's probably an automatic keep um, for this deck. That's key. Um, there's just too much to to manage all these resources like to be able to play that one or two allies every turn is huge um so storm comes is is a big key card plus uh having and, and so if i pull gather information in starting hand that might be a keep as well because then i'll use gather information to pull storm comes um but yeah overall that was that was a lot of fun um, I had a lot of fun building this deck. I had a lot of fun playing this deck and against this quest and everything. It was just very thematic. Um, I don't do a lot of thematic playing and I feel like that was, it was a really, really enjoyable experience. And so, yeah, and that's, that's what we want to do here. We want to, we want to do things different. Maybe that you might not, not normally do or think of, um, Anyway, uh, a couple things before we go here. Um, first off, I still have a stack of, of promo cards. You can check those out from two episodes ago, I believe. Um, the I have these promo cards. They're an alt art Gandalf and a 
um, an Arondir hero that I created myself on the other side. So it's a double-sided hero promo card um, that you can go ahead and just really just shoot me a message. I have a, I have a ton of these. If you want one, send me a Discord message. I've got the, uh, the, the link to our Discord channel in the, um, I've got the link to our Discord channel in the description here. My Discord handle is Falofatuk, or, um, Fool of a Tuk. Uh, I, I like, I like Falofatuk, though. Uh, <laughs> so, um, my Discord handle is Falofatuk in, in the Discord channel. Go ahead, send me a message. I will, uh, I'll send you one of these cards. I'll, I'll send it in a, in a top loader or whatever, um, and just send it letter mail, and, uh, I'll send you one. Just message me. Just reach out, message me. Um, you know, I've known you've seen the video and stuff. Then, and, and really, I just I wanna I wanna give these cards away. And and I I think there's there's some really cool art featured featured on this on this card. So, um, yeah, do that. Feel free to do that. Also, um, I want to invite you guys too to to send me in um suggestions. Like if you have like an idea for a second breakfast show, maybe, you know, maybe you want to see, maybe you want to see one where I build a deck and draw the random quest here on the video. And, and I, and I don't know what I'm playing against until I, until I draw the quest, which could be an absolute disaster, but it'd be fun. Um, maybe you want to see me build one of my decks. I don't know if there, there's any interest for that. If you want to see a deck build, uh, go ahead and and you know message me your ideas, um, and yeah, I could I could do that sometime where I just for for an episode or whatever just sit down in in preparation for the next second breakfast and and kind of walk through building a deck how I how I do it and and my process and stuff. Um, there's not much method to the madness. Uh, but uh but you can kind of see my how how i think about deck building and my thought process behind that which might be might be interesting might be helpful might be um embarrassing for me but uh but yeah if you just want to see how i build a deck and stuff especially for these challenges and how i go about that um maybe you know let me know that that might be something you want to see uh or if you have any other ideas for how I could do a, a different and, and interesting second breakfast, maybe, um, yeah, send me your ideas. Send me if there's an, an attribute or something that, that you might think of that maybe, maybe isn't on my list. Um, I know I have a, I have a big list of attributes to, to randomly select from, but I am seeing a lot of the same ones coming up over and over again now. Um, it's just the nature of, of random lists, but, uh, but if you have any ideas for, for some random lists, maybe, maybe see, uh, see what we can do there. Um, I mean, if there would be enough interest, if, if you, if I got enough messages, I, I highly doubt it, but if there would be enough interest, I would maybe entertain the idea of, of potentially running a an epic multi like a like a second breakfast epic multiplayer and each person gets their own deck attributes for an epic multiplayer which could be really cool um be a lot of work but but that could be really interesting um so so if you guys if you guys if there would be enough interest in that if you if you message and um but yeah just look for Look for interesting ways how I could maybe twist it and tweak it and, um, you know, maybe do some some special episodes and stuff. Um, you know, send me a message. See, I, I want to hear your ideas um, while, while still, yeah, I still want to, I mean, I want to retain the heart of what Second Breakfast is. Uh, just, a, just a fun challenge every couple weeks to just experiment with some new and different cards, right? So, uh, maybe, yeah, just, just send me, send me some ideas for how I can, how I can maybe twist and tweak and, and make it interesting and change it up a bit. 
Um, yeah, but other than that, solid win. And that's all I really have for, for this time. Um, and yeah, well, I guess we'll, uh, we'll see you, we'll see you all on the next one. And as always, have fun, play cards, stay hungry. Mm -hmm.